Our research focuses on marine sponges. We chose marine sponges because they produce an incredible array of chemical compounds and we hope these might be eventually developed into new anti-cancer drugs. It takes a lot of time and a lot of money and the cooperation of many different groups ranging from marine biology up to chemical expertise and of course medical expertise. But everything in the end starts at sea. Why are we so interested in sponges? Well, sponges are sessile organisms, which means that they cannot move. They are not able to escape predators, for instance. And they are filter feeders. It means uh, they feed on suspended food, suspended particles, and particles may be bacteria, viruses, even pathogenic ones. So these organisms have to defend themselves from predators and from potential pathogens. How do they do? They have a vast array of weapons and many are chemically based. That's why when we look for new compounds that might be useful to fight diseases, cancer or other sicknesses, we do look for sponges. There are really many different species of sponges and each may produce the drug we look for. Sampling sponges for this kind of purposes takes at least two different sets of skills. First of all, you need to be quite a good diver, of course. And then you need to know about sponges. You have to recognize them to understand whether you already sampled some sponges or not. You do not want to overexploit the marine environment. That's why you always leave a good part of the sponge attached. And also you need to know which sponges you have not yet sampled because what you're looking for might be hidden there. It is important to look for the same sponge even in different places, at different depths, or in different seasons, because they might produce various compounds, different compounds, according to all these factors. Some sponges may stay in full light. Nevertheless, many sponges do not really like full light. They prefer to stay in shaded environment, maybe in dim light or into caves. Caves are very interesting when you study sponges. Caves are still places, the water is very calm and everything is absolutely quiet. Sponges are among the really rare organisms that live well inside caves. Sponges may be the dominant organisms Sometimes they carpet the whole walls and ceiling of the cave, maybe even at the bottom. There you have encrusting sponges, massive sponges, rampant sponges, white, yellow, red, pink, any kind of color of sponges you might imagine. Of course, when you sample inside caves, you must be even more careful if possible, which does not only apply to you. You have to think about bottom time, decompression and so on. But also you have to think very carefully about the environment you're working within. You don't want to scratch the ceiling with your tank. You do not want uh, to touch the bottom 
and suspend all the fine material which is uh, on it. And of course, you do not want to take anything that is not needed. Sponges can be deceiving. They really cheat you. You have different species, they just look alike. So the only way to understand what are you really working with is to go for taxonomic identification, which might be based on morphological characters or genetic fingerprints. That's why sampling is not the final part of the job, then we have to preserve our samples, which includes preserving a big part of it for extraction and chemical characterization, and also a small part of it that will be sent to the taxonomist for precise identification. Diving for science may be quite tiring sometimes, yet it's probably the best job ever. <laughs>